Okay, um, good afternoon all. Um, we'll get started. Hello, um, or kia ora if you're joining us from New Zealand to our New Zealand counterparts. Um, a few people are still drifting in, um, but we'll get started with. Thank you, um, everybody, for joining us today for this AdSet webinar on the TalkType um, product demo about making learning more accessible with assistive technology. Uh, my name is Darren Britton, and I'm the National Assistive Technology Project Officer with the uh, National Disability Coordination Officer Program, and as part of the Australian Disability Clearinghouse on Education and Training, that is ADSET for short. This webinar is being live captioned. Um, to activate the captions, click the CC button in the toolbar that's located either at the top or at the bottom of your screen. And we also have captions available via the browser. Um, Jane will pop a link to that into chat now. Um, uh, first off, I'd like to acknowledge I'm joining you today from the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation here in Melbourne in Victoria, Australia, and I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging, and I extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today and acknowledge their ongoing connection to country, land and sea. Uh, before we begin, just a few housekeeping details. Uh, this webinar is being uh, live captioned by Jason from Bradley Reporting um, and will be recorded and made available on the AdSet website in the coming days. If you have any uh, technological difficulties uh, during this webinar, please email admin at adset.edu.au. That is admin at adset.edu.au. Um, throughout this presentation today, please feel free to use the chat box um, with us and to chat to each other, but please remember to choose the all panellists and attendees so that we can read what you have to say. If you have a question that you'd like to ask of any of the presenters today, please put that into the Q&A box uh, function and we'll answer those at the end of the product, um, uh, the webinar today. And in today's webinar, uh, we have Jack Douglas and uh, Stefano from Carescribe, uh, which is based in the United Kingdom, and they've joined us at an unreasonably early hour, so thank you very much for that, um, to give us a demo of the TalkType software and how this can make learning more accessible. So I'll throw over to you, Stefano. Oh, thank you so much. Um, nice to meet everyone. My name is Stefano. Um, a little bit about me. Um, I am the product relationship manager uh, for Carescribe, and my job is basically to show you the wonders of talk type um so i've got a very small presentation it will be maybe five minutes and then i'm going to do a demo with you so it won't be death by presentation which is always a win um and and then and i'll answer some questions at the end okay so welcome to talk type so what is talk type uh, uh talk type is a mac based dictation software which allows students to dictate anywhere on their mac with high accuracy speed and allows students to control their computer with the power of their voice. Um, if you're familiar with uh, uh, other dictation softwares like Dragon, you know it is a great tool for um, students, um, uh, but unfortunately Dragon no longer um, works on Mac, which leaves students a bit stuck with their dictation, so they either have to use the Mac inbuilt um, dictation software or something else, which some uh, we, we know that the Mac inbuilt dictation it, does have um, a lot of problems surrounding it. So what we did is we created TalkType, and which is our answer to providing students with a high quality dictation software on the Mac. Um, this is what the uh, software now looks like. Um, there are a couple of uh, new features um, in this the new upgrade. Uh, we have dictate notes, which is this button here. Now, this is our uh, voice driven built in word processor, and we put this in uh, due to customer feedback. We found that people wanted to dictate only in one software and not flip between the two. And then we have auto dictate, which is next to it. That is very much um, where you can dictate anywhere onto your Mac, and I will show you both of them in the demo. Talk type is very is compatible with other pro processors such as Microsoft Word, Office, Pages. Uh, basically, if you can type in it, talk type is compatible with it. And this goes the same way as web browsers. Uh, so Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, Firefox, um, same with your Gmail and your Outlook. 
You can also navigate uh, your computer by voice. I will demo a few examples and show later how to connect to uh, the command list and how to uh, do um, search for that as well. Ooh, excuse me, sorry. Um, and finally, I will want to touch on how students and how people can um, customize uh, the software to their needs by adding customized words and customized shortcuts. And that's very much it for the presentation. So very quick, just wanted to go through a couple of things with you quite nicely. So let's jump into the exciting stuff, shall we? So. Oh. computer issues so this is talk type let's make this a little bit bigger shall we just move the zoom bar out of the way so you can resize talk type just drag it and drop it in the middle um and this is what it looks like as i previously said uh, there are two main features uh we have dictate notes and auto dictate i'll go through both of them for you so i'll start with dictate notes dictate notes is our voice driven built-in word processor um and to start it or to activate it you there are two main ways uh you have this big button in the middle or oh, in the bottom left hand corner you have this microphone button either one will start it so if i click it Hello, my name is Stefano, comma. Today, I'm going to talk to you about some dictation software. Full stop, new paragraph. To be fair, you don't actually have to talk that slowly. I just like doing it because it's quite fun. Um, what our software engineers have done really well is concentrate on speed and accuracy for this. Um, and what we do generally say is for the best speed and accuracy is to be in a quiet room, to wear a headset. But as you can see, I'm not really wearing a headset. I'm using my laptop mic. I didn't want to ruin my hair for this event. So I thought I would get a test uh, out properly. Um, and um, I'm not really sat directly over my microphone. I'm, I'm sat about a foot apart and it's still picking up everything I'm saying quite nicely. Um, I speak at quite a fast pace as well. And as you can see, it's still picking everything up. Um, and I don't have to worry about what I don't have to think about what I'm dictating I can just dictate and just speak to you guys well like normal I guess um what um our engineers have also worked on quite heavily is a background filter um and this is very much a case of this reduces all background sound so that the student or the client can dictate with ease so for example if they're anything like me when I was at university or in college um I was generally never in a quiet place. I was in a coffee shop, in lectures, in a hall, or doing something like that. Um, so there was always background noise. So when dictating, I found it quite hard. This feature, which is automatically built in, will reduce that noise so that I can still do all those things and still dictate and not have to worry about something getting picked up in the background. Um, if I was to demo it, I guess, if I started clapping in front of my desk, as you can see, it's still picking up everything I'm saying and I get a round of applause at this time in the morning, which is always a win. You can obviously you can do your standard uh, editing skills with this. So if you wanted to punctuate, you would say full stop, comma, question mark. Same way as if you were looking at, um, if you wanted to drop down a line, you would say new line or new paragraph. That's quite nice. You can also um, edit your text with this. So if I wanted something bold or italics, I would say the software's name and then um, the command. So talk type, bold on. Then everything would be in bold. Talk type, bold off. Talk type, italics on. Everything would be in italics. Talk type, italics off. Talk type, underline on. Everything then would be underlined. Talk type, underline off. And this is the same logic as if you're wanting to delete or scratch something. So if I wanted to delete the last thing I've dictated, I would just say, talk type, scratch that. And then it deletes that. 
if I was looking at deleting a singular word, I would look at my, my paragraph and just say, oh, talk type, delete looking. And then it deletes the word and then you can carry on dictating. Um, if you wanted to select or change a word, I would say talk type, select, change. As you can see, it highlights it, and then I just carry on um, uh, changing it uh, to the word that I wanted to change. I'm just gonna pause my mic just there. Um, once you've finished dictating and dictate notes, there are two main ways of exporting this. You can do the standard highlight and copy and paste it into your to a word processor of your choosing, or in the bottom right-hand corner, there's a copy button. You click copy, it copies it to your clipboard, and then you move over to your word processor, and then you open it up, and that's how, and then you paste it in that way, and then you can save it. And that's dictate notes. Um, that is very much what I call um, my my brain fart moment. Um, it's I. I when I've got stuff to get down very quickly, I use dictate notes quite a lot because it just lets me get everything out quite nicely. It puts it all in the word processor and I'm really happy with it. Um, auto dictate is the button next to it. So if I click on it, it does, um, uh, let's make this a little bit smaller so we can see. So oh, let me move over to a document. So now I use Google Docs but that's purely on the fact of I'm a little bit too cheap to pay for Microsoft Office, but you can use Microsoft Office, you can use Pages, you can use Excel, you can use anything that you can type in, talk type is compatible with it. So once you've clicked on to um, auto dictate, it does tell me that I am now dictating into Google Chrome. There are two main ways of uh, starting, same way as dictate notes, big button in the middle, button in the bottom left hand corner. So if I click on that, I and I start talking. As you can see, it does come up into our word processor first. If you want to move it across, what you can do is you punctuate or you pause. So if I finish off my sentence, full stop. And then it goes across that way. Um, or if I paused, or it's that way. Now I like to have it next to um, my Word document when I'm dictating, purely on the fact of um, I like to see what I, I'm, I'm dictating in real time, but you can have this in the background quite happily and it works just fine. This is just preferences now, full stop. You can also control your computer with this. So if any student or anyone wanted to open up another Word document, you would say uh, talk type open pages, and it opens up pages for me quite nicely. Um, as you can see, it says that I'm already automatically dictating into pages. I don't need to click into the word processor of my choosing. So I can carry on talking, end my sentence, full stop. And it goes across. If I wanted to go back, I would say talk type, open Google Chrome. And then we're back to Google Chrome and I can just carry on uh, with the rest of my, my essay or, or my dictation on, on, on that uh, word processor, full stop. This is the same logic as if you wanted to open up a um, Internet Explorer or Safari. So I would say talk type open Safari. And it's open up Safari, and then I just carry on. I'm going to pause my mic here. So, and that's that's auto dictate. It just it very much lets you dictate anywhere onto your Mac quite happily. Um, and um, and yeah, um, there are a few key features that I really want to show you. Um, if you guys are anything like me, or if you're anything like me, when it concerns commands, I found it quite difficult to understand the commands. 
Um, and I know with other dictation softwares, you either need to write them down or you need to uh, memorize them or have one of those editable PDFs. What we've done is we've created a command center. So in the top right-hand corner, there's this button up here. If you click on it, this uh, opens up the command center. Now you don't need to have this open to say the command. This is just so that you can find a command that, that, you, that you're looking for. If you click on discover commands, we have all of our commands here at, at the drop of a hat, hundreds of different commands. So everything from global map commands, mind view commands, all the way down to like um, audio note taker and Microsoft Excel commands. Now, if they're anything like me and didn't want to search through hundreds of commands to find the right one they wanted, we do have a search bar, which is here, just at the top. If you click on it, and then let's say if they wanted to look for how to delete something, they would put in the word delete, and then the command would come up for them. Same way as if they were in mind view and wanted to understand how to branch something or wanted to know the command to branch something, you put in the word branch and then all the commands come up quite nicely for them. Now we put this in um, purely on the fact of we found that when you're dictating, you don't want to have to think about a command. You just want to be able to the whole point of a dictation um, uh, software is to be able to dictate and not worry about anything else. And if you're thinking about a command, you tend to forget what you're dictating and we've tried to make it more streamlined for the user. You can also um, uh, create uh, shortcuts and create um, custom words as well. So if I click off this, in the top left-hand corner, there's the talk type button up here. If you click on it and go down to preferences, it opens up our settings tab. And if you click on text processing, this is where you can change your uh, text on talk type. So everything from your font size to your font. If they're anything like me when I was a kid, and maybe a little bit now at times, you can have a profanity filter on if you want. Um, but what you'd be looking for is a customized words. So if you click on edit, and you click on add new customized words, you just type in the word here. So if you put in a word, I use the word babble, um, and then you click on OK. As long as it's said in the sentence, you don't have to train it. It does recognize it quite nicely. And below is customized shortcuts. So if you click on edit, again, go down to add new shortcuts. And um, a phrase that I found quite uh, useful recently is if I put in, if I said the word insert signature, it would replace it with my signature, kind of regards Stefano or, or the best Stefano or anything like that. This is also uh, good for people in uh, medical or life sciences. You could put in acronyms. And then the actual word, it just speeds up the process so that they can carry on doing things um, with that. And that's generally talk type. Um, what we've done um, is we have put a lot of effort and speed and accuracy with this. Um, and we've tried to make a dictation software um, that gives the user a great experience. Um, and I think it's an absolutely amazing product. One, I'm being paid to say that, but that's because I actually love this product itself. It's, it's something um, that's helped me out over the last couple of months. Um, and if you do have any questions, please ask me. I'll be more than happy to, to answer as many as I possibly can. Um, hi, everyone. Um... My name's uh, my name's Jack. I'm the uh, the sales manager here at Carescribe. Um, thanks, Stefano, for um, Thank for demoing TalkType. Um, it's not an easy job with dictation software. Um, and yeah, every, every time I watch your demo, it's, it's it's genuinely enjoyable. So thank you. Um, I'm uh, I'm basically here just to talk a bit more about um, the company and also sort of the uh, the operational side of things as well. So. Um, what we what we have at the moment is um, Carescribe is a uh, a company that builds assistive technology based in uh, in Bristol in the UK. Um, the the place behind um, Stefano that you can see at the moment is uh, is one of the bridges in in uh, in uh, in Bristol. So um, yeah, we're very proud of where where we're from, and um, it's really exciting to 
uh, be on a webinar with uh, Australian and, and, and New Zealanders in. It's, it's, it's really cool. Very so much so. Making time for us today. Um, just a bit of a background about um, Carescribe as a whole. So our um, we we are very much end users of the assistive technology that we build. So um, we have uh, a couple of different types of uh, software that we use. Uh, I work with uh, a captioning tool that we use, uh, and Stefano um, looks after the talk type side of things. Both products are um, progressive evolutions of um, the initial sort of technology that was built for our director. So um, our director is heavily dyslexic. Um, he was at university studying um, uh, to become a doctor. Um, and the reason we went down the sort of uh, speech to text route um, initially is because he was really struggling to sort of understand the um, the, the nuances and, the, and the, the vocabulary that he was being presented with for his studies. So somehow, I don't know how, um, him and his uh, a couple of his um, student friends had some spare time studying medicine again I don't know how um, and they realized that um, they needed more help in being able to process that type of complex terminology and that speech engine that we that um, derived from from way back then is the is the speech engine that runs both talk type and and captioned now um, so in terms of um, you know accuracy and uh, being able to understand different types of terminology um, that's purely the reason why our, our software was built um, and we very much look to be um, specialists in uh, building assistive technology because uh, the majority of the stuff that work with Carescribe have those specific needs. I'm I'm dyslexic and dyspraxic. Um, uh, we try to build relationships with all of our customers and all of our uh, be it the be it one student or um, an institution or um, a, a company. We try and really try to understand the needs of those users and the needs of those companies. Um, and we're forever developing products. So the, the talk type that um, that Stefano just showed you um, is actually a version two. We did we had we had version one um, that is uh, that is no longer. But the reason we've um, built version two is off the back of feedback. We really try and build a community of um, of users to try and use that feedback to to make our products better and more sort of um, accessible and as easy to use as possible. Um, I know I was given again when I was back in university I was given um, I was given dragon and um, I think I'm, I'm not sure I, I don't think I got on too well with it in the end but I know things have uh, things have developed a, a lot over the last sort of I'm going to age myself now but uh, yeah sort of 10 13 14 years um, and yeah when I, I used to I use talk type now because um, like like Stefano said if I just need to brain dump something I find it really easy to just use talk type to to put all my thoughts um, into one place and then sort of edit and move things about. Um, but just to just to sort of pick up on uh, sort of the the commercial side of things. So um, as uh, as I mentioned, we're we're a forever evolving company, and uh, the pricing structure is relatively relatively new so um i've i have converted it into uh australian dollars because i thought there's, there's no point telling you in pounds because that's just gonna uh just gonna annoy you probably um so uh the way that the license works at the moment is it's uh based on a subscription model so um there's something called a pro license which would provide you with um three thousand minutes a month of of, of dictation um, and that is uh, a very specific number of uh, $87.92. And then the light version, which is a thousand minutes of um, dictation for the month, is uh, 4396. Um, so that's sort of for the individual user. Uh, we also have uh, seat space licenses. So if you're a university or a disability services and you have um, a handful of students or 10 or 50, um, depending on how many you buy, we can sort of add discount to, to that rate. Um, but yeah, just in terms of um, the commercials and that kind of thing, uh, I thought I'd just um, let you know what those are to begin with. Um, the uh, the best way to purchase uh, TalkType at the moment, um, at the end, we'll sort of send out our email addresses 
uh, because as I mentioned, we're a forever evolving company and the platform is about to be pressed to, 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 to deploy in uh, within the next sort of 24 hours. So um, if we were to say, right, go and buy TalkTide at the moment, you actually can't so um what we're doing is if, if you reach if you reach out to us we can sort out your licenses and stuff like that but as it's uh as it's um a long weekend for easter we're hoping that the deploy button which our, our developers are really happy about working over that that period um by sort of tuesday wednesday next week you would be able to just go to the website and buy it um so um yeah in terms of uh a little bit of background about the the company and us um i thought i'd just fill you in on that again thank you stefano for um demoing the the product um uh i i demo um our, our captioning software and that's hard enough as it is so being able to actually know that something is uh writing exactly what you're saying as you're speaking um is uh, in front on, on a webinar in front of people is uh, is really impressive so thank you for that um thank you. darren i think uh we're probably ready to take questions and um yeah thank you for having us excellent thank you stefano and thank you jack thank you. um for the, for the info on that um uh, there's no questions so far, but please, if anybody's got some, throw those into. There were some prior questions which were sent out, um, or two people I think came in with some with some questions um, that I'd passed on. I don't actually have at hand at the moment. Um, um, I think I have that. Okay, apologies. Yeah. But while while uh, while that's happening, can I just say nice demo? Um, may Thank I say, you. doing it in real time, um, knowing all the pitfalls of it not doing every word, you know, necessarily a hundred percent. But it was fairly accurate given background noise and the fact you didn't want to mess your hair up, which I appreciate being early in the morning as well um, by by wearing the headset. So it was probably a close to a worst case scenario for dictation software to sit there in front of a laptop, you know, several feet away and Very talk much. to a bad microphone. Um, and uh, and I, I like to put it through its paces. Works. <laughs> yes, you put it through its paces, and I, I thought it actually performed quite well, um, given what was there in comparison to you know some of the other software that's there. Now I think there's there's probably some. Um, uh, s some other Mac users out there that certainly, you know, the the death knell as it was of um you know dragon you know leaving the platform there was a lot of people had wed themselves to you know to the software and things like that have you found that there's been a a, a transition in, in the uk particularly for some mac users that might have been users of or that have reached the capacity of say the, vo the voice options or the voiceover options inside mac to um talk type um yeah i mean i i think uh... I mean, because I, I deal with this specific sector um, of the, the UK, um, the, uh, uh, which, which is basically students um, and that side of it all. Um, and the feedback that I've always got from them, which has been absolutely lovely, is that they love they they love certain elements of talk type, uh, especially uh, dictate notes, because it just lets them get it all out. Um, there's uh, been a few new updates, I think with like Windows users and Dragon, I think, and especially with Windows 11 and Dragon sometimes not being compatible with it, uh, it does help out quite a lot when um, we're having a conversation and um, they've switched over to a Mac and they understand that we're here to help them with with, um, with talk type and everything like that. And especially when the, uh, the Mac dictation, um the issues surrounding mac dictation like it can be a little bit laggy at times and um it, there isn't a um what's it called uh it doesn't pause after a minute it doesn't shut down like the mac um dictation software does you only have a certain amount of time with mac dictation to get your dictation out talk type is you can keep it in the background consistently as long as you pause it on and off you're quite happy and then it just means it it's a lot more streamlined than than the Mac dictation as well, which is quite nice. Yep. Um, now, in terms of um, Jack, you'd mentioned the um, the pro and and the light version in terms of minutes. Um, is there minutes getting used if you were just using? I'm playing devil's advocate here, by the way. Sorry, I'm putting you on on uh, without due notice um, to use the voice command um, controls because I can see just the voice control ability and the flexibility that's there to set those up is actually um, a very very useful tool. 
um, in itself to setting up voice commands um, to control other bits of software. Is that coming off the off the minutes um, per se because it's recognizing what people are saying? Um, unfortunately, yes. So okay. basically, any any time that the uh, that the speech engine is is processing anything, that's that's kind of when uh, when the minutes are being are being taken. Yeah. Um, but you know, the, the list of um, applications you had there was uh, was quite extensive. Um, so how in depth do those commands uh, go, Stefano, in in terms of being able to control um, various bits of software on on the Mac? Um, they, to be fair, it's most editing side of it all. It's very good with uh, with their controls and everything like that. There are a few new things that are coming up with commands because um, we can always do better, always. Um, but same way as if you are looking at um, when you're using auto dictate and you are transferring from uh, the word processor over and using that, it is, I'm, I'm quite happily say 94% um, the commands are, are there because we can't get all the commands yet because we very much made sure that this update was speed and accuracy because that was at the forefront uh, before looking at all the controls. Excellent. Um, the background removal feature, um, was that something that came into version two or was that there in version one? Because I thought that your clapping exercise during that was actually, I'm thinking this is not going to work and it did. Um, There's a few errors, bits that it picked up, but you know, it largely it, it got through yeah. that. So that's, that's, um, that's quite a nice feature. Yeah, that came in, I think that came into the newest feature. I wasn't around feature one. Um, I've seen it and I'm very much glad that I don't have to demo um version one <laughs> um but yeah no it was something that was brought up quite a lot just because i mean you're not always in a quiet room and to have to to go off to a quiet room to just to dictate it's, it's a little bit isolating it can be a little bit isolating so it's quite nice to be able to still if you're with a friend or if you're doing something in, in like a group setting, you can still dictate and still have, you know, that 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 conversation or have that that noise around you. Or if you're like me in a coffee shop, hmm. can't uh, sit there, have a coffee, do your work, not have to worry about someone ordering a latte. I mean, it's always a win. <laughs> Comes up in the middle of your assignment, latte, please, or latte exactly. for. Um, uh, uh, sorry, um, there's there's no other questions there, so I'll just keep rambling for a couple of minutes with, with a few questions that I've got. Um, can you start the uh, the dictation without the need to click on the button? Is there a keyboard shortcut um, to do that? Currently, no. No, okay. currently, no. That's come up a couple of times. I've brought it through to my software engineers, which they have uh, flagged it. Um, and hopefully in the next upcoming updates, okay. that will come in time. But, but no. Um, uh, what was my other... Oh, the customized customized words. I thought that was quite interesting. So you're not training your voice for the words. You put the voice in, or the word in, and it will recognize your voice yeah. to that word. How yeah. accurate is is that? I I, I sound skeptical, and I'm probably yeah, I'm playing different. I probably am skeptical funny. of that because I think I'm just used to, and a lot of people would be used to the you train it to your voice versus here's the word I want you to recognize. They just recognize it from my voice. Yeah. Um, no, it, it's very good. It's it's. I've... There has been, I'll be honest, there has been a couple of uh, one or two times that it hasn't recognised, but I've said it a couple of times in the sentence and it's worked. You don't have to, what we have done is you don't actually have to train the software because it recognises accents, it recognises um, uh, the, the lexicon that you're speaking. Um, and one of the other good things is that we've, because it's built off the back of, uh, of our, uh, I guess, our first um, software, which is Medinkle, which is the medical um, side of it all, it's got all that inbuilt as well. So it's, it's, it's very good. I, I will more than happy if you have a Mac, you can have a license to play around with. So, and you can, you can see how good it really is. Um, I suppose there's yeah, two other questions. One of those is, um, can people demo um, the software themselves? Is there a demo or a limited license version um, available? Is that from the website or should they contact to get hold of a license? Contact me or me or Jack and we can get that sorted for you. Yeah, Jack? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's that's absolutely fine. The, the proof is always in the pudding, isn't it? So um, Yeah, and I'm very much, you know, put it through its paces, let me know. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, and my other question, which you might have just answered as well. So how well does it work with an Australian voice or Australian accents? You said it's accent Very kind good. of neutral. Yeah, it, because of, of of what we've done with it and what I what, what we sound like I've done something with it. Um, our engineers have worked incredibly hard on this, um, this especially this update. So accents and everything like that, it works perfectly fine. I will, I will I'll add to that as well. The main developer is actually a New Zealander. So um, the, the, the main, uh, the, he, he's a guy called Paul, um, who uh, he, he built the, the first uh, version of TalkType and he built the second version of TalkType. And um, yeah, if, 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 an, if an accent has been uh, practiced with TalkType, it is definitely that of uh, uh, New Zealand. And um, he's, he's, uh, he's um, put, definitely put it through its paces. So uh, yeah. Um, that that is a one that we can actually tick off and say, yep, definitely works with that. <laughs> <laughs> it was built from that. Um, yeah. I've, there's, a, there's a question just come through around um, contact details, and I'll just let everybody know we'll be putting the contact details um, for both uh, Stefano and um, and for Jack up onto the website. Post this. Um, uh, Etc. So that you can get directly um, in touch with if you like. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add, or we might wrap this one even just a little bit um, earlier if need be? Or Jane's just actually put both um, both your email addresses into into chat there. So if anybody wants to get in touch, um, please do so. Um, we're going to give people a little bit of an early time for Easter, which would be which would be lovely. Um, there's no other questions there, but thank you both very much um, for joining us today um, to talk about that. Thank and I think we, we often don't um, touch on some of the Mac software that's out there and specifically some Mac software. So I think this is um, it's very nice to, you know, bring bring something new um, to the market in Australia um, that's there. So, um, yeah, a couple of very, I think, very powerful tool there. And I'll be looking forward to um, the updates that you're talking around, um, Jack, with the with the caption ed side of things and, um, and the launch of your other products coming up. Um, thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, Jane will put a link into chat for the survey um, that we conduct at the end of these. We do value everybody's feedback um, and if you can fill it in now um, or it will also be sent out in an email link afterwards as well. But thank you everybody uh, for your time today and again thank you uh, Stefano and Jack for thank getting you. up nice bright and early. Um, I, I'm not, which, what time is it there? About five in the morning now or something? Or uh, a past? 5.40. 5.40. <laughs> okay, getting up bright and early um, to, to give us this uh, product demonstration today. I think that's fantastic. Um, thank you very much. Thank you to uh, Jason as well from Bradley Reporting for the live captioning today. Um, just to let you know, this uh, the webinar will be put up onto the, as it was recorded, will be put up onto the headset website in the coming days. So keep a, an eye out for that. But thank you, everybody. Um, have a lovely rest of your day and a uh, lovely Easter to everybody. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Thank you so much.